where his knee never touched the ground and he took it in to score. You remember that one? Early in the season in the NFL. Yeah, and I remember one time, it may have been last year, where Ernest Givens of the Oilers did the same thing. Got to about the two-yard line, actually jumped over the man, and he landed on his feet in the end zone for six. Summer salted in. And yep. Up the middle. No, he's going to throw this one deep. Got a man. He oh, dropped it. Oh. And it's very rare that you see Donnell Patterson drop one. He is the leading receiver for the Bearcats. Six catches for 185 yards. That was one he watched back. Gee, I have to credit the Bearcats too with their fakes. They're carrying out their fakes well. On the option, the pitch to Boyd has to Look move. out! Great block down the sideline. He's Boyd gone. Go. Touchdown. To the 10. Touchdown it is. Oh, was there ever. As soon as that block was made, it was over. Boyd said, see you later. I'm out of here. 3.40 on the clock left, and Sterling Boyd takes it all the way. Boy, Skip, that is it all the way. A super block, and you're going to get... Now, watch this block that Skip's talking about. Option left. Here goes right. Pitch. Watch this block. Right it's there, it. Right there. And just about the time that block's made, Sterling Boyd is saying, folks, change the numbers on the scoreboard. It's 18 instead of 12. Awaiting the extra point. They have not made an extra point all night tonight. This one they will kick, and it is good. And with 3.40 left on the clock, it is 19 to 7 now. And you add up some of the mental mistakes and some of the key decisions that were made. And here's the up top view. Maybe we'll see this another view of that block right there. That seals it. Oh. And now look at him turn on the speed. He is out of here. What a run. What a run. And as we mentioned in the pregame, Sterling, boy, is back 61 yard run Woo. you get a shot of the coaches over there john outlaw and the rest of the coaching staff saying hey this guy is tough 340 left coming up at the half we're feature the halftime highlights along with some halftime statistics and a couple of songs from the marching band. Oh, Skip, I... Boy, I hope they can overcome this. 19 to 7. Awaiting the kick. But getting back to what I was talking about, about some of the decisions. This will go through the end zone. Well, not through, but they're going to down it. They're taking it to 20. But every decision from here on out for head coach Wayne LeBlue will be magnified due to the fact that it's a must game for them. Hey, we, we talked about it in the pregame. It was talked about in the newspaper. This is a do or die situation. And there's, there's, that's all you can say. They've already lost two district games. They lose another one. And they're playing for pride, Skip. They completely absolutely forget the playoffs. 3.40 before the half. Option. Pitch to Lewis to the outside and the short end of the field has killed Lewis three times already. A good run though, a good pick up of about six or seven on the play. They run that thing for the wide thing and he may have a little bit more room to run. Skip gave me a chance to mention again the post Newsweek cable with us here tonight. And I know those folks understand when I make a comment like, boy, that's, that's a lot that we've got to overcome. Of course, talking about our hometown team, the Ryder Raiders. Good defensive stick that time. Number 74 getting back there that time is Tim Klein. Tim Klein, 6'4", 
190 pound senior on the defensive end. Closed the end that time. And it's third sure down. did. He slammed the door shut. And for the guys at Post Newsweek Cable, hey, they've got a good ball club in those Sherman Bearcats, huh? They are tough. Third and four. Could be a possible passing situation. Flanagan keeps it on the option. Cuts up, but he won't have the first down. It's fourth down. And I'm sure that's one of the things they, they might mention to him at the half, is, hey, don't give up on the play too early. Because you have to get so many yards. If we're not going to get that, then there's no sense of you keeping the football and trying to get it yourself. Well, that's true. But you got to go back and credit again that Sherman defense. They're doing an excellent job of playing option football. And probably, Skip, what they're trying to do is take away the pitch from Andrell Lewis and say, hey, Flanagan, you run. We'd rather you run than, than Lewis. Exactly. 2.47, and they will have to punt the football into the wind. There's a couple of... Yeah, you know who that is? Now that, that is Mr. and Mrs. Doring. That, th that's Rich Doring's parents. Hey, all right. All right. <laughs> Rich on camera three down on our giving us all those good ground shots. Let's say we get a shot of Rich there. He's probably shooting that shot there, isn't he? <laughs> all right. Now, as I was saying, they're going to have to punt the football into the wind. And with 247 left, that gives Sherman plenty of opportunity to get something else going. Fourth and one, though. Look for the fake. Nope. Decent punt, taken at the 45. Look out! To the 50, and brought down from there. On the return that time is Patterson. Donnell Patterson on the return. Ruled dead at the 41-yard line. And with just 237 left, Sherman with an opportunity to put more points on the scoreboard, and they already lead it by a score of 19-7. to And Robin Pierce made the stop that time for the Raiders. So skip this time. The Bearcats will start in plus territory. They'll start at the Ryder 42 yard line. They fake the pitch, looking to throw down the sideline and it's just a little bit too far that time intended for Larry Turner. Turner had his guys beat. That's the second time tonight that the Bearcats have had the defensive secondary beat, but unable to get the football. It is, and it's hard for Wright to try to throw into that gale, that north wind. And I'll tell you something, if that gives any indication at all right there, they're not sitting on this lead. 2.31 to go in, in, in the first half. Sherman already enjoys a 12-point lead, 19-7. They're going for more. They were going up top right then. Key thing on the sideline, I just see Scott Saltzman with a, uh, with well, we're crutches. talking about it here in a minute, with some crutches. There goes Jordan. Another nice pickup, and he's going to be close to the first down. Now, that, that thing gets inside the rider 35, and it's going to depend on the spot. They'll spot it at the 33-yard line, and there is Saltzman, as Skip told you, and that's, boy, I hate to see that. The key man in the middle is not there. Third down, about three. Or make it two, third two. 159, clock ticking. Up the middle, Jordan, first down inside the 25 to the 24 yard line. You mentioned about Jordan, the way he runs the football, and with him having to carry the load for the ball team has really matured him. As you take a look at it from the ground level, and it's the defensive secondary having to come up with the tackle, so that means the offensive line doing their job. Got another good point by you, too, with, with the absence of Sterling Boyd being out with injuries and Jordan getting a chance to run and carry a lot of the load. Look what it's done. It's given him a great one-two punch now with Boyd and Jordan. Across the middle, caught at the 10. Great catch. With his first catch tonight is Randy Bryant across the middle and his man beat. First in goal from there. They will mark it at the seven. And Sherman not doing anything wrong on this drive. 
Man, they, they, this is really precision football by Sherman. You talk about execution. Jordan to the five, well, to the six. Before being pushed back that time. Perez in on another tackle. He's been around the football all night long. Perez on the defensive tackle also had some help from John Kunkel that time. Second and goal right outside the five yard line. They're officially put it down at the six. Raiders gonna have to come up with a defensive stop right here to even have a chance at this ball game. Looking to throw. Look out. Deflected, good defensive play. That was Sean Perez, 38, that knocks that thing away. And Skip, if he doesn't make that deflection, it's six points for the Bearcats. Exactly. Perez with another super job. As we just talked about him, he's all over the field here in the first half. Inside a minute to play as the clock stops with 40 seconds left. Here in half number one. Bearcats lead at 19-7, looking for more. Long count again. On the option play, makes the pitch, touchdown. Boy, and I'll tell you something, we, we've been talking about blocks all night. Credit number 11, Randy Bryant, as he just seals it with a block on Kevin Owens, the corner. Roundtree on the touchdown run of six yards out. Roundtree had a 93-yard touchdown run against Denton last week. Caps this one off on the drive. Six-yard TD run and awaiting the extra point. It's 25-7 right now. Extra point is up and it's good. And with 35 ticks left here in the opening half, it is now 26-7 in favor of the Sherman Bearcats. I'll tell you, Skip, when you talk about Sherman, you have got to talk about multi-dimensional offensive football because they've got so many weapons. They run the football so well at you with Sterling Boyd, with Jordan. Then you look at Wright's ability to throw and the receivers he has. This is a good club. And, uh, you know, it's no big surprise that they're undefeated in district when you see what they're doing. And, and no surprise to see that they've won four straight. And if they keep this thing up, they're going to make this five in a row now. And Coach John Outlaw has always been a tough coach as far as disciplining his ball team and the event of always having speed. And now they can vers versify the team up a little bit with a little speed, a little passing game, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. They are hard to contain. And they've got a good defensive unit as well. You know, speed on the defensive side and then in uh, Artis Paramore, the big 300 pounder. Pierce, five yards deep, will down this one again. And with just 35 ticks, you see the, the wind playing a major role here. As 26 unanswered points as the Raiders get on the scoreboard first and have not been heard of since. That's right, it was the four yard touchdown run by Ramon Flanagan. It capped off that 64-yard scoring drive for Ryder on their second possession of the night. And as Skip just told you, they have disappeared since then. Out of the shotgun, Flanagan. Sack time. Goes down. Number 41 on the defensive sack that time is Jeff Goodman. That's the nose man. And Goodman coming away with the defensive sack all the way back to the 14 yard line. Second down and about 16. They work out of the shotgun again. This will be the last play. Three seconds on the clock. Flanagan throwing it up. Forget about that win. You see that oh. win? <sighs> yeah. I think he just forgot about the win and that was almost six points there. If uh, Bearcat could have caught up with that one without diving for it. If you're a Bearcat fan, of course you you got to love it. <laughs> oh, no question about it. Never thought in your wildest dreams you'd be up by 19 at the half. Then on the other side, if you're a Ryder Raider fan, a lot of catching up to do. It's getting dim, as we talked about in 
the post and the pregame show. And like a song that back in the early or late seventies, early eighties, that song "Slip Sliding Away." Yeah, That's close. exactly what's beginning to happen for the Raiders. But you know my points and views, there are two halves of a football game. That's right. <laughs> and we'll come back with the second half along with halftime highlights and statistics, and we're going to glimpse at the marching bands. We'll do all of that when we come back. You're watching the Game of the Week on WFTV and Post Newsweek Cable. Sherman leads it 26-7. Humphrey Printing Company knows how important appearances are in your business. That's why the quality of their printing is unsurpassed anywhere in North Texas or Southern Oklahoma. Humphrey Printing is the color specialist and will customize to your exact specifications, letterheads, envelopes and computer forms, plus they're standing by to handle brochures, publications and catalogs. Your success is number one with Humphrey Printing Company, 1602 Midwestern Parkway, since 1925. Nobody knows pizza like Pinocchio's. Pinocchio's Pizza is quality pizza, not costly pizza. So get one of our large price slices for just $8.99. Five different big pizzas, each one just $8.99. Dine in, take out, or free delivery. The price stays the same. No coupons needed. The savings are on us. So call or come to Pinocchio's and ask for your $8.99 special. Nobody knows pizza like Pinocchio's. half of Memorial Stadium, WFTV's high school game of the week, and a good shot right there of the marching Sherman Bearcat Band. And they are enjoying a 26-7 lead as Sherman over the Ryder Raiders. Now we'll have the opportunity, and you will at home to sit back and listen to the sounds of the high school marching band from Sherman High, that marching Bearcat Band.
there. Everybody's discovered the news on CNN. Now they're finding the more you watch, the more you see. That's why so many claim CNN is the number one cable value. Larry King Live. It's hot topics and talk every weeknight. Then, World News wraps up the events of the day every day. And Moneyline keeps you on top of Wall Street. The one cable network viewers worldwide turn to is CNN. Mr. Cable Vision. George Fires, it's October. What can we plant in our lawn this time of year? Fescue. I mean, we're on the target date, the first between the 1st and 15th of October. Get your fescue in. And, you know, Mike, use a lot of the new improved varieties, like your Rebel, like your Bonsai. They'll go ahead, carry us plumb through the winter, look good year-round in shaded and troubled areas. All right. To find out more about how to take care of your lawn, garden, and landscape, watch Vista Cablevision Channel 10, 7 o'clock Wednesday night for Garden Line. Back at Memorial Stadium, halftime score 26 to 7 in favor of the Sherman Bearcats, and you're now watching the Pride of the Raiders, the Rider Raider marching band, as halftime continues here at Memorial Stadium. <laughs>
Did everything? Y'all sound it good?
performance put on by the Ryder Raider marching band. And we are at the half, 26 to seven. Right now, we're giving you an opportunity to tell you how we got to that score as we will take a look at the very first touchdown of the night for the Ryder Raiders. Look at the run. He'll See go in. Later. Touchdown, Ryder. Flanagan gets into the end zone on a four-yard touchdown run as they cap off a good drive. Capped off a 64-yard scoring drive, as Skip just told you, and the touchdown run by quarterback Ramon Flanagan. But then Sherman had an opportunity to get on the scoreboard just when the Ryder Raiders thought they had him held. Here come the Sherman Bearcats. Big hole. Across the 50, he's got speed. See you later, we just talked about him inside the 10. Touchdown. No flags. Jerry Jordan took it in from 65 yards out, but the extra point was muffed a little bit. They didn't even get an opportunity to kick that one, and they trailed by a score of seven to six. Now, during that time, of course, uh, we had talked about Sherman's opportunity to put some more points on the scoreboard in the first quarter, but they had some penalties that stopped them. They really did. They had two major penalties on their next two possessions. They both times holding penalties that stopped them, and then skipped the next time the Ryder Raiders got the ball back. They were also stopped by a major penalty. That happened to be a 15-yard clipping penalty that stopped a Ryder Raider drive. Now, here is a key point because ever since this play, after this play, you have not heard anything from the Ryder Raiders. This was the kickoff after the touchdown. Here in the opening quarter. That was an 80-yard drive for sure. Ever since that, the Sherman Bearcats have marched off 26 unanswered points, and the Ryder Raider offense has not been seen. And you saw after that middle breakdown, two of the Ryder kids shaking their heads and skip. Ever since that, that's all they've been doing is shaking their heads because, as you said, 19 unanswered points by Sherman, and they have amassed a 26-7 to lead here at the half. A quick look at the first half statistics will tell you the story. Sherman with 13 first downs compared to Ryder 7, and on down the line, you see the yards on the ground. Look at the difference in yards rushing. Almost the same amount of attempts, 29 attempts for Sherman, 23 rushes for Ryder, but look at the difference. They've doubled Ryder's rushing yardage, 232 for Sherman, 105 for the Ryder Raiders as we kick it off here in the second half. As we open up the second half, they booted through the end zone, so Sherman will have it, first and 10 from the 20. Rest of the scoring drives go like this, 10-13 in the second quarter, Jordan in from one yard out. Don't forget Sterling Boyd's exciting 61-yard touchdown run, and then Roundtree took it in from six yards out with 35 ticks left to play in quarter number two. So a second half of football still left here on WFTV and Post Newsweek Cable. On the handoff, here comes Look Jordan. Out. Jordan breaking a tackle across the 30-yard line up to the 35-yard line and a first down run. And you talked about how good a game that Jordan is having. The very first handoff of the second half, Jordan gets loose for 13. And Sherman just picking up where they left off in the first half. And Skip, we're gonna see uh, exactly what kind of character Ryder's got to see if they're gonna come out here in the second half and try to mount some opposition and get back in this football game or if they'll just continue to shake their heads and shut it down. Right on the handoff again goes Jerry Jordan. Jordan up to the 40 yard line, a good five yard pickup from there at 11.29 and clock ticking. No change as far as the offensive backfield is concerned. Raymond Wright at the quarterback position. Jerry Jordan back there. Although Roundtree is seeing a lot more action than Sterling Boyd is here in the second, or in the first half. And Boyd has not been in there, so we may check the sideline to see if there's a problem with Sterling. On the handoff, here is Roundtree, and Roundtree is stuffed right at the line of scrimmage that time. Nowhere to go. A host of black shirts leading the way for the Raiders. Number 70, Kunkel. And Kunkel is going to have to carry the load since number 74, Scott Sussman, is out of the ballgame. And if you just tuned in, we're talking about the big 251-pound senior nose man, the all-everything, Scott Sussman. 
sustained a knee injury in the first half and he will not be back. On the handoff, again up the middle and again, it is Jordan. Jordan is close to another first down. And you have to think right now, if Sherman can punch this opening drive in, in the second half, they will just about turn out the lights for the Ryder Raiders. And nothing fancy by Sherman. As you look up on the scoreboard again, and we mentioned they lead by 19 points, 10-22 to go in the third quarter. They don't have to get fancy, Skip. All they want to do is maintain possession of the football keep this uh, drive going and, and the longer they keep the football and they keep it away from Ryder, there's no way the Raiders can get back into this thing. First and 10, looking to throw down the sideline. He is open to the 20, to the 10, and front down at the five yard line. Oh my, we've been talking about that all night long, that they have been able to defeat the secondary and getting open for the catch is Bryant again. This time he holds on to the ball. Randy Bryant, the 5'9", 130 pound senior flanker is open. You'll see Wright with about a two step drop and a great throw and a good catch. Believe me, he did. And Kevin Owens makes the touchdown saving tackle inside the five and Sherman will be first and goal from the Ryder Raider three. On the pitch there, Sterling Boyd, see a touchdown. We talked about not seeing him much and we probably won't see him much after this now. No, nope. you know, he has been injured and missed several ball games and with the score 32 to seven and the point after tried to uh, coming up, I don't think you'll see Sterling Boyd anymore. Three yard touchdown run for Sterling Boyd. And you talk about the character that the Raiders needed to have. As Sherman takes the football and drives it the length of the field. An 80-yard drive. And a wait for the extra point. Into the win, and it goes through. So with 9.48 left to play here in the third quarter, it is now 33 to seven in favor of the Sherman Bearcats. Now the only good opportunity that the Raiders will have is they will have the win and Flanagan will definitely have to throw the football. They're gonna have to throw the football as you see the score 33 to seven. But Skip, I'm not sure the win is gonna be enough help. But I think at this juncture of the contest, they need a whole lot more than a win that they're back to get back into this thing. So if they don't come up with a score on this possession, it will definitely be tough. And we'll have to start looking for the fun facts and all the <laughs> other exciting things to talk about to carry you through this one. <laughs> and that's got to be a very dejected sidelines for the Raiders. And skip a team that in at the outset of the season had such tremendous high hopes. Everybody in the district looking at Ryder to win this thing and fumble. Ball's loose again. And I think Sherman's got it. The officials say they, they do. do. And they do. Well, oh my. And we'll see who comes away with it. 45 up on the ball. That youngster is Raymond Hall. 5'10", 170 pounds, a junior. And another miscue on a Sherman kickoff by the Raiders. Just didn't feel the ball. Grant Grimes. An irony to that, at least that time they tried to field the ball but couldn't hold on to it. That's another deal of, of the up men, not used to receiving kickoffs as Jordan gets the handoff on the last carry. But we talked about that on the one that they didn't get. As those guys aren't used to really touching the football much. They're basically in there to block. That time he had the opportunity. Well, that's right, because they're basically the short men. And another key thing, he could have called for a fair catch. That's right. But that doesn't come no. to mind when you're down there no, on the field. But that's an option, and you're correct. Second down. We'll see if they, well, flags fly on this one. I was going to say, we'll see if how long they keep Raymond right in the ball game as well. And I, by looking I think down there, I out. think he's already out of there. Now we've gone to uh, a new youngster. Looks like Rodney Sneed. He's a junior, backup quarterback. 
So they will more than likely put some of their reserves in. Saving it up to some other key games further down the line. Sneed, long count and gives to Boyd. Boyd gets stuck, one of the first men to get there. For the Raiders, number 54, David Freeman, six foot, 218 pound senior there on the defensive tackle and stops Boyd. Well, from up here, it looks like he stops Boyd from the first down, but they are going to bring the sticks in and measure this one. While they measure this one, a reminder coming up on WFTV, Midwestern State University football, a key game for them as they get set to take on Austin College. And let's don't forget those Hershey Huskies. They've got a big matchup this weekend against the tough Hazel Hornets. They'll be here on Saturday afternoon to take on Bobby Page and his Huskies. So a triple header weekend for all of you here on WFTV. Ryder Raiders, Sherman Bearcats, Hershey and Hazel. And boy, as Skip just told you, the boys are back in town. MSU, Saturday night here at Memorial Stadium. 8.45 left to play and Boyd shy of the first down, less than a yard. We'll call it third down and about one. Actually less than that, quarterback just keep this one and go with it. Long count, they decide to hand off instead. Quick opener, Jordan inside the 15-yard line and a first down. And this is where Scott Sossman has missed. They're going right up the middle. Really are. Right straight up the gut, nothing fancy. Just straight ahead power football. And as Skip told you, there's Jordan. And I'm beginning to wonder, Skip, is there anything magical about the last name of Jordan? He did jump up in the air in the first half, didn't he? But was his tongue hanging out? We can't see with that helmet on. First and 10, Boyd to the outside. And brought down from behind at the 10 yard line. And, and, and should we forget if we're talking about Jordan? It's gotta be the shoes, Kim. <laughs> gotta be. Gotta be the shoes. <laughs> Good run from Boyd that time, a pick up of five, recall it second and five, their market at the 10 yard line, and this will might be the last opportunity to see number 19 run the football. Well, Sterling I'm certain you know, I thought it would be after he just scored the touchdown just a second ago, but I guess Coach Outlaw wants to get Sterling some more action because he has missed some games due to an injury. This one to Jordan, touchdown, off tackle that time, and you have to credit again that offensive line doing the job. The hole was there. Donnie Lane could have ran through that one. It's a 10-yard touchdown run. Now, wait a minute. I could have walked through that one. 7.25 well, on the clock here at quarter number three. And you, and, and you just wonder now as you see Mr. Jordan again. As we said, Skip, it's got to be the shoes. Untouched. And the offensive line, too. Untouched. Nobody touched him. You just have to wonder now how bad is it going to get? How lopsided is it going to get? This will be point number 40 if they're successful. Into the win, and it's good. Again. Schultes, Mark Schultes with the extra point. And. With 7.25 left, it is now 40 to 7, and the lights dim for the Ryder Raiders. Of course, the faithful will stay, but a few of the others will start to head to the exit sign as they see the season coming to a close. There's yeah. time out on the field. 7.25 left. We'll be back. Oh, 
not gonna happen to me. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen to me. I was really shocked when I found out I was infected. I didn't think anything like this could ever happen to me. Only certain people get it. I'm a good example that you can get AIDS from heterosexual sex. Who cares? I'm trying to make the best of the time that I have left, because realistically, I really don't know how much time that is. You could be putting yourself at risk. Call 1-800-342-AIDS. It's time for You Lost Your Life with your host, Christ Dummies, Vince and Larry. Hey! Hello! <laughs> and welcome to the show that proves if you don't buckle your safety belt, the loser is you. That's right, Vince, and by not buckling up, you could end up in places you never dreamed. Who likes traction? Or the emergency room? Plus, Larry, if you're not buckled up, you could maybe take a ride in a beauty like this. Stay tuned! You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. at Memorial Stadium. Skip Boyden along with Donnie Lang and the entire WFTV sports crew. High kick, it's anybody's it. ball. The fair catch. Did he call it? Yes. All right. And makes the catch at the 37-yard line. Now that's pretty heads up there. Aaron Young, a junior, there he is right there, wisely, wisely signals for the fair catch. And now an opportunity for the first time in the second half to see the offense for the Ryder Raiders. And as we mentioned, they will have the wind. Keep your eye on the wide receivers. See if Flanagan will come out throwing. Trailing 40 to seven. Hand off, Lewis cuts it back inside across the 40 and down at the 41 or 42 yard line. What do you have to do? Do you, do you pack it up for the season or do you say, hey, Skip, I don't know. This, this is when you when you talk about kids like Mondrell Lewis, Rashad Hickman, Ramon Flanagan, Scott Sausman. This is a team, a Ryder team, that had such high expectations coming into the season. Everybody throughout the district said this is the team to be. This is the, th this team's loaded, and it's got to be. You know, it's got to be more than disappointing. They've got to be wondering, looking deep down inside. A whole lot of soul searching and wondering what in the world happened. I mean, the wheels 